welcome. Today, we are studying how to overcome the sin that we so easily fall into. Before we begin, I have a favor to ask of you. If you have not already subscribed, please support our work by doing so, and sharing the video with family and friends. Thank you. We all have sins that we are constantly struggling with. It could be watching pornography, masturbating, lying, gossiping, fornication, adultery, anger. Some of us have even resigned ourselves to them, we are helpless in the face of them, and think there is nothing we can do about it. But Paul writes. For sin will have no dominion over you, since you are not under law but under grace, Romans chapter 6 verse 14. Sin shall no longer be your master. The Bible calls such sins that we almost always fall for, besetting sin. Hebrews chapter 12 verse 1 says. Wherefore seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight, and the sin which doth so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. The New International Version renders it as the sin that so easily entangles. The contemporary English version reads the sin that just won't let go. It is a sin that easily traps or ensnares us. It happens to all of us, both young and mature Christians. Some think that because they keep going back to the same sin, maybe they are not saved. The Bible assures us that when we believe in the Lord Jesus Christ we are saved. And that salvation does not depend on whether we feel it or not. When we are saved we do not automatically become perfect and sinless. We will continue to struggle against our sinful nature since our new nature will be at war with our old nature. Paul went through the same struggles, and he says in Galatians chapter 5 verse 17. For the desires of the flesh are against the spirit, and the desires of the spirit are against the flesh, for these are opposed to each other, to keep you from doing the things you want to do. The people we admire in the Bible all struggled with besetting sins. Both Abraham and Isaac repeatedly lied about their wives to protect themselves. Samson struggled with lust throughout his life. David and Solomon also struggled with lust. Peter struggled with the fear of man such that he denied knowing Jesus three times. Now all these, and many more examples, have been written down for us so that we do not also make the same mistakes they made. The first truth we need to know is that, we should not be controlled by besetting sins. For sin will have no dominion over you. In Christ, we have been set free from our sins and are no longer slaves to sin. Paul says in Galatians chapter 2 verse 20. I have been crucified with Christ and I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. The life I now live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. The second truth we need to accept is that it is the power of Jesus that delivers and keeps us from sin. It is the power of Jesus that holds you up in victory, not your own strength or wisdom. Jude chapter 1 verse 24 says. Now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you blameless before the presence of his glory with great joy. It is the power of God that keeps us from stumbling. It is the blood of Jesus that presents us blameless before God. To overcome the sins that easily beset us we must understand why we fall for them in the first place. We get lazy and complacent and we stop feeding our spirits with the things that improve our relationship with Christ. That is when we begin to take for granted the gifts of freedom and forgiveness that Christ bought for us. And we begin to make excuses for the sin that is enticing us. Psalm chapter 119 verses 9 to 11 asks. How can a young person stay on the path of purity? By living according to your word. I seek you with all my heart. Do not let me stray from your commands. I have hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. We first see a desire for holiness or purity. We are always pulled towards the things we desire. When we consider some sins as classy and exciting, those are the sins our hearts pull us towards. Our heads may be telling us porn is wrong, that it destroys our relationship with Christ, but our hearts beat faster with the excitement of watching the latest sick display. We must be honest with ourselves and about our own desires and bring them in line with the desires God has for us. Psalm chapter 37 verse 4 says, Delight yourself in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. When we desire to be holy or pure, we make the decision to recognize and turn away from fleshly invitations. A young captive, Daniel, had such a desire. When they set in front of him the choicest of food from the king's table we read in Daniel, 1-8. But Daniel resolved that he would not defile himself with the king's food, or with the wine that he drank. What have you resolved not to defile yourself with? Second, 
To keep ourselves from being entangled, we must dive deep into the Word of God and stay there. Psalm chapter 119 verse 10 says, With my whole heart I seek you. We cannot come to God or serve God with a half-committed heart. We are either all in, or we are not in at all. Jesus told the church of Pergamum in Revelation chapter 2 verses 14 to 16. But I have a few things against you, because some of you hold to the teaching of Balaam. In the same way, some of you also hold to the teaching of the Nicolaitanes. Therefore repent, otherwise, I will come to you shortly and wage war against them with the sword of my mouth. Have you ever seen an asthmatic patient leave the house without his inhaler? Our spiritual connection to the Lord is as vital to our lives as an oxygen tank is to someone with a heart condition. Likewise, when we consider fellowship with God as crucial to our existence, we don't make excuses for neglecting it. When we seek God with all our hearts, we will find Him, because He is eager to be found. Deuteronomy chapter 4 verse 9 says. But from there you will seek the Lord your God and you will find Him, if you search after Him with all your heart and with all your soul. We seek Him by studying His Word. Learning what pleases and displeases God helps us to know God Himself. Third, it is not enough to read the Word of God, we must meditate on what we read day and night. We must memorize the Word of God such that it becomes part of the fabric of our souls. Joshua chapter 1 verse 8 says. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night, so that you may be careful to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. It is when God's word and thoughts become part of the fabric of your soul that it gives you power. In that way, when temptation knocks, truth answers the door. The amount of truth that has been read, memorized, meditated, and personalized will often determine the amount of wisdom that responds when the flesh calls. The psalmist says in Psalm chapter 119 verse 105, Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. When sin comes cloaked in sheep's clothing, the light from God's word would reveal it for what it is. When it comes all dressed up, God's word in you will whisper to you, flee fornication. Fourth, to keep ourselves from getting entangled, we must continually ask God to keep us from stumbling. And he told them a parable to the effect that they ought always to pray and not lose heart, Luke chapter 18 verse 1. God's power is available to everyone who calls upon his name through his Son. The Lord is near to all who call on him, to all who call on him in truth, Psalm chapter 145 verse 18. When we have been in the presence of a holy God, we are able to see sin for what it is, a vile and dangerous trap to keep us from heaven and our crown. A person who continually kneels before God does not run toward sin. Fifth, to avoid a relapse into sin never give your flesh more credit than it deserves. This is often the biggest mistake we make in staying on the right path. We assume that we are stronger in our flesh than we really are. So we allow ourselves to be caught in compromising situations and then act surprised when our flesh could not resist. Paul says in Romans chapter 13 verse 14. Put on the Lord Jesus Christ, and make no provision for the flesh, to gratify its desires. We make provision, when we set ourselves up for failure, with only our weak, sinful flesh between us and the sin. Two young people who very much like each other, alone in a room watching a romantic movie, are making provision for the flesh. A recovering alcoholic going out to a party with old drinking buddies is making provision for his flesh. Paul told the Philippians. Only let your manner of life be worthy of the gospel of Christ, so that whether I come and see you or am absent, I may hear of you that you are standing firm in one spirit, with one mind striving side by side for the faith of the gospel. When you say, no, to what everyone else is saying, yes, to, you are living as trustworthy ambassadors of your father's kingdom. And finally, to help you overcome the sin that easily entangles you, make a list of all that sin has cost you. Your list may include, names of loved ones, educational goals never reached, money wasted, and lasting scars caused by chasing sin. Always remember why you desire to overcome this particular sin. Where has it led that you did not intend to go? When you feel weak, or the old desire tries creeping back, reread the list. Then thank God for each item on the list and the ways he has healed you from the wounds. God has made us more than conquerors through him who loved us. But we can easily be entangled in sin when we grow cold to God's word or choose to walk in the flesh instead of the spirit. God expects his children to be alert and of sober mind. Your enemy the devil prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. 
when we cling tightly to our good shepherd no lion, and no sin, can ever entangle us. God bless you. Amen.